The dramatization you are about to see is provided to you by your doctor so that you will know more about the surgery or procedure that has been recommended for you. This presentation is designed to supplement the information provided to you by your doctor with the expectation that you will then have the information necessary for you to understand and determine whether to give your informed consent for this procedure. This program is not intended to be a substitute for a frank and open discussion between you and your physician. And actually, I want to discuss with you the possibility we may want to use a cesarean section. I think I know what that is, but would you go over it for me anyway, Doctor? Certainly. A cesarean section is the delivery of your baby through an incision in the abdomen. The many reasons for this procedure all center around our concern for your safety and the safety of your baby during delivery. Among the many reasons for cesarean section are cephalopelvic disproportion, or CPD, which means that the baby is too large or in the wrong position to fit through the pelvis. The pelvis may be too small. If the baby is in a breech or upside down position or in a transverse or sideways position. A very rare occurrence for a cesarean section is if the mother is carrying twins and because of their positions they have become entangled or the second baby is not in an appropriate position for delivery. The placenta may be covering the cervical opening. This is called placenta previa. Previous uterine surgery such as a myomectomy. The mother may have a current herpes infection in her vagina or a cervical infection which she could pass on to the baby. Or the doctor may consider the health of the mother unsuitable for vaginal delivery. For instance, she may have a heart condition that makes the strain of labor dangerous. Consult your doctor if you wish to know more about the reasons for a cesarean section. So I guess the only alternative to cesarean section is vaginal delivery? That's right. Okay, well, can you tell me what a cesarean section entails? Can you describe what's going to happen to me? Of course. Now, prior to the surgery, you may be watched. You likely will then meet and discuss with the anesthesiologist any issues related to the method of anesthesia that's best for you. And you won't be allowed to eat or drink anything for several hours before the surgery. This is to prevent aspiration if you should vomit due to the anesthesia. Then we'll wheel you down to the delivery room. Now I want to describe what you'll see so that you won't be surprised or frightened by anything in there. There are bright lights. These are for the surgeons to see and to see everything clearly. They hang overhead. There'll be surgical instruments laid out on a tray. You'll probably hear those instruments clinking a lot as the nurses and the assistants prepare for your operation. Everyone, of course, will be wearing caps and gowns and masks, and some will wear gloves. These are all part of the sterile environment, and this sterile environment includes air filtration. So the room is going to feel cool and it's going to smell very clean. You'll receive an IV or an intravenous. That's a needle in your arm that drips fluid and medication into your system. Then you are administered an anesthetic. We would probably give you either a general or a regional anesthetic. If a general anesthetic is used, it's administered in the form of gas through a mask. This will put you to sleep for the entire operation. Now, once you're asleep, we may insert various devices into your mouth or throat to maintain an open airway. This could leave you with a little bit of a sore throat afterwards. Also, there could be some dental injury from that tube or airway, especially if you have any loose or damaged teeth. Now, after the anesthetic is administered, we may choose to use a urinary catheter. That's just a small tube that's inserted into your bladder to keep it empty and out of the way for the operation. It's important to note here that there are three basic types of anesthesia, local, regional, and general. A regional anesthetic, as its name suggests, numbs an entire region of the body. There are two types of regional anesthetic, spinal and epidural. 
And, as mentioned, general anesthesia puts the patient to sleep, and she is unaware of the surgical procedure taking place on her body. How long does the operation take? Well, it's different for different people, of course, but generally the entire procedure takes only 30 minutes to an hour. Can you describe the procedure? What happens to me? You'll be placed in a flat or supine position. We begin by making an incision into the abdomen. It is important to note here that there are two different types of incisions that can be made. Midline or up and down, and fan and steel or bikini cut. You and your doctor can discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each type of incision and decide which one is right for you. Our incision continues into and through the abdominal muscles to the uterus, where we can then make either a transverse incision or a classical incision. Transverse means across the abdomen. This is considered to be low risk, the recovery period is shorter, and you may be able to give birth naturally the next time. Classical, on the other hand, is up or down, and it requires a cesarean section for all subsequent births. Be sure to ask your doctor more about the differences between these two incisions and what you can expect and why. We then open the uterus and remove the baby and the placenta. We then close the incisions with sutures. Well, that's about it for the procedure. We're then, of course, wheeled into the recovery room where the staff nurses and doctors will watch over you and your baby until the anesthetic wears off. Okay. Are there risks or complications I should be made aware of? As with any surgical procedure, there are inherent risks and the possibility of complications that are associated with cesarean section. First and foremost, there are the risks associated with the anesthesia and infection. For most healthy patients, Anesthesia does not tend to be a risk. However, some patients may have allergic reactions to any form of anesthesia. Reactions can range from mild to severe. With general anesthesia, some patients can develop a problem with lack of oxygen, which can lead to brain damage. It's important to note, though, that oxygen levels are carefully monitored by the anesthesiologists, and everything possible is done to prevent that from happening. Another risk of general anesthesia is called aspiration pneumonia, where the patient vomits and inhales stomach contents into the lungs. That is why patients are not allowed to eat anything for several hours before surgery. With regional anesthesia, there is the risk of nerve injury. However, this is extremely rare, particularly in someone with no history of neurological problems. A headache after spinal anesthesia is a possibility. Remaining flat for a few hours after surgery helps. And infection? With respect to the surgery itself, even with the most careful precautions and techniques, there is always the chance of developing an infection. This infection can be treated with medication, but it occasionally results in a longer hospital stay. There are a few additional risks that I should also mention. Injury to the bladder. The bladder must be pushed down at the place of the incision in order to get the baby out. Therefore, it is at risk, but particularly if the patient has had a number of cesarean sections or has built up a backlog of scar tissue. There is also the risk of injury to the ureters. These tubes, which connect the bladder to the kidneys, may be injured when the doctor repairs the incision into the uterus. This is because all organs are in such close proximity inside the abdominal cavity. Excessive bleeding. This may result in hysterectomy or removal of the uterus if the bleeding cannot be controlled, but this is rare. Whenever there's the risk of excessive bleeding with elective surgery, such as with the cesarean section and the resulting need for a blood transfusion, the patient is always given the opportunity to protect herself by banking her blood in advance. If you are interested in this procedure, you should ask your doctor about the feasibility and advisability of banking your own blood or of arranging for directed donations, where you bring in your own donors. It takes some time to replace the blood taken from your body and to complete the necessary arrangements with the hospital, so it should be done as soon as possible. In any event, having a supply of your own blood available in advance of any surgical procedure which carries the risk of excessive bleeding also reduces the chances of any complications like AIDS or hepatitis 
or other serious blood-related infections. Fortunately, the likelihood of developing most of these complications is very small, and if they do occur, they can usually be treated successfully. And you have to remember that hundreds of operations, just like yours, are performed successfully every single day. If you have any questions about the risks and complications of cesarean section delivery, be sure to consult your doctor. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is your recovery period. Yes. How soon will I be allowed to go home or get back into my normal routine? Well, in most cases, a cesarean section patient and her baby can return home in a matter of days. Full recovery time is different for different people, of course, but usually patients are back to work or able to resume normal activities in four to six weeks. I also want to stress, though, that I recommend that you not do anything strenuous during your recovery period. Let's give your body the best possible chance of full and speedy recovery. Okay. Is there anything else I can do to ensure that I heal properly and as quickly as possible? Yes. As a matter of fact, there is. You should be up and moving around as soon as possible. This will depend upon your level of discomfort, of course, but the sooner you get the blood flowing freely and normally, the sooner you're going to feel better. And you'll also reduce the risk of blood clotting in your blood vessels, or what we call thrombosis in that process. You should also be sure to cough and breathe deeply, as instructed by your nurse. This will greatly reduce the chance of pneumonia or collecting fluid in your lungs. These activities, in addition to standing or walking, may at first seem uncomfortable or slightly painful, but it's important that you perform them. They can help you to avoid complications. Are there any additional benefits I can expect from having this operation? Well, the inherent benefit of cesarean section is the safety of both you and your baby during delivery. Cesarean not only offers an option when vaginal delivery is not possible or should be avoided, but it also carries the added benefit of shortening the time of delivery. I feel a lot better just knowing more about what to expect. And I'm certainly glad that we've had this discussion. If you have any questions about your procedure, be sure to ask your doctor now. Also, it is very important that you give your doctor all of the information you can about your general health and your past medical history. If you recall something that you'd previously forgotten to tell your doctor, please make sure that you do so. If you've ever had trouble with an anesthetic or painkiller, or had a bleeding problem, or have had allergies, such as to medications or foods, you must tell your doctor about it. 